Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will discuss about energy and its resources. First of all, let's see what is a natural resource. Natural resources are any kind of natural substance which is required by humans. Different natural resources occur in different countries and regions and are not spread equally. As a result, countries trade their natural resources to ensure that their needs can be met. Some examples of natural resources can be given as minerals and metals, forest, water, fossil fuel, coal, oil and gas. Now let's see what is an energy resource. Energy resources such as oil, gas, coal, wood, wind, wave, sunlight are types of natural resources. They can be used to produce heat and electricity. Energy sources could be classified as renewable and non-renewable. Non-renewable energy sources are things like oil, natural gas and coal. They cannot be easily replaced because they have taken millions of years to form. A problem with non-renewable energy source is that we as a planet are using them up faster than they are being made. This means that one day they will run out. Renewable energy resources like wind power, wave power, solar power and biofuel will not run out or can be easily replaced. So economies are trying to move towards greater reliance on renewable energy resources. Non-renewable energy resources include coal, gas, oil and nuclear power. Coal, gas and oil are sometimes known as fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are finite resources. They will not be around forever. They are no longer being made or are being made extremely slowly so they cannot be easily replaced. Solar power is also considered a non-renewable energy source because although nuclear energy itself is a renewable energy source but the material used in nuclear power plant is not. There is only a certain amount of uranium in the earth that can be used to make nuclear power so it is a finite resource. All of Earth's crude oil and natural gas is formed from marine plants and animals that died billions of years ago. When they died, organisms sank to the bottom of the ocean and were gradually covered in layers of sediments. By this way, oil and gas formation took place. Over millions of years, the organic rich sediments become buried deeper and deeper as layers of new sediment piles upon top. As they are buried, heat and pressure rises, turning the microorganisms into oil and natural gas. Oil and natural gas are lighter than the surrounding rock, so once they are formed, they move upwards through tiny pores and fractures in the surrounding rock. Some oil and natural gas manages to get all the way up to the surface and escape through beds into the atmosphere. Other oil and natural gas deposits get trapped under impermeable layers of rock or clay. These trapped deposits are where we find oil and natural gas today and they are extracted by using long powerful drills. Oil and gas can be burned to produce electricity. To do this, oil is burned in power plants to heat water and produce steam. This steam which has kinetic energy, propels the blades of a turbine, converts into mechanical energy, a sort of engine that's rotated. The turbine is attached to a generator and when it spins, it produces electricity. Oil is also used as a fuel in cars, planes, buses and trains. Before it can be put into cars at petrol station, crude oil has to be refined in an oil, oil refinery to turn it into different fuels like petrol, diesel and jet engine fuel. Oil can be also turned into various types of plastic and chemical products so it is an extremely valuable natural resource. When oil and gas are burned, they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and contributes to global warming. Most of the coal we have on earth today was formed during a time called Carboniferous period about 360 million years ago. Before the dinosaurs, when 
much of the earth was covered in tropical swamps as the plants died their remains sank to the bottom of the swampy areas making layers and layers of squash plant material this eventually turned into a brown spongy material called peat over millions of years and with changing environments layers rock began to build up on top of the peat and become buried as the peat was built further and further heat and pressure acting upon it turned it into coal the hotter the temperature the deeper the coal is buried and the longer the amount of time the coal is buried anthracite is the most efficient coal coal is still being produced today in swampy tropical regions but because it takes millions of years to form it is not a renewable source coal can be burned for heating or for electricity in the same way as oil and gas the main nuclear fuels are uranium and plutonium these are radioactive chemical elements nuclear fuels are not burned to release energy they are involved in nuclear reactions where atoms are split to release energy in the large amount and in and in the form of heat okay so non renewable energy resources will not last forever once we have used up our supplies of oil gas coal uranium there will be no more because of this increasing energy demand we need to look for different ways for producing energy that is sustainable renewable energy sources such as wind solar power wave power geothermal are sustainable as they will not run out and can be reused again and again renewable energy sources do not release harmful greenhouse gases into the atmosphere so they are much more environmental friendly generating electricity from renewable sources is much more complicated than from fossil fuels so it requires lots of new technology which can be expensive to develop examples of renewable resources can be given as solar wind water geothermal etc Large windmills are called wind turbines and are built to harness wind energy. When the wind blows, the blade moves and spins a turbine connected to a generator which produces electricity. Wind turbines essentially work in the opposite way to a fan. Instead of using electricity to make wind, they use wind to make electricity. In order to create enough energy capable of powering thousands of homes, Energy companies build large wind farms with lots of wind turbines. They usually build these in windy places. Wind farms can also be built out in the ocean where it is very windy. If there isn't any wind, then no electricity will be generated by the wind turbine. Engineers do a lot of measurements and calculations before they build wind turbines to figure out the best areas to place them. The wind doesn't blow all of the time. but the important thing is how much the wind blows on an average the primary source of all energy on planet earth is from the sun plants get energy from the sun for photosynthesis and other animals eat the plants to gain energy heat from the sun also drives atmospheric circulation which controls the wind tides and waves solar power is power generated directly from sunlight there are two types of solar panels which allow us to generate either heat or electricity solar thermal panels are filled with water which heats up in the sunlight the heated water is then pumped through a tank heating the water that is connected to the taps in the house solar panels called photovoltaic cells are used to turn sunlight directly into electricity photovoltaic cells are made from chemical element silicon when silicon is exposed to lots of sunlight it generates an electrical charge a good thing about solar cell is that they can be placed on the roof of a building or home not taking up any extra space it is quite difficult to generate a lot of electricity using solar energy this is because individual photovoltaic cells are expensive and they can't generate a lot of electricity so you need thousands of them in order to generate 
enough electricity to power it up. Solar power can't be harnessed in places where the sunlight isn't very strong. Solar power is best in countries where the sun is strong and regular. Geothermal Geo means earth. Geothermal energy is heat energy from the earth. It is always warmer underground than it is at the surface. But in some areas, if you dug just a few kilometers underground, it can be up to 70 degrees Celsius. Water can be pumped into these rocks through pipes. When this water comes back up to the surface, it can be used directly to heat people's homes or this steam can be used to generate electricity using a turbine and a generator. The only issue with geothermal energy is it can only be done when the rocks are hot enough. Hydroelectric energy Hydro or hydra means water. Hydroelectric power is there for a way of harnessing electricity for the running water. Hydroelectric dams are built to store large amounts of water in reservoirs. Large man-made lakes made from flooding river valleys. When electricity is needed, water is allowed to escape through pipes in the dam. The water flows downwards under the influence of gravity and turns turbines linked to generator generating electricity. Mountain regions are good for hydroelectric power because they are steep and have lots of rainwater. Hydroelectric power is more reliable than wind and solar power, although it is, does not depend on enough rain. Hydroelectric dams are very expensive to build. When a dam is built, a huge area is flooded to make a lake which affects the people and animals living there. It can also badly affect future migration patterns. Biofuels are made from crops. Ideally, biofuels should be carbon neutral, absorb carbon dioxide as they grow, and they give off carbon dioxide when they are burnt. However, fossil fuels are used in production of biofuels. For example, in making fertilizer, so they cannot, so they are not carbon neutral. Crops for biofuels could be used to feed people instead. This was all about renewable and non-renewable energy resources. So thank you everyone for watching this video. Please comment down in the comment section if you need a detailed description video on any other topic.